Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science Video 8. It's on energy flow and ecosystems. In the last video, we talked about the importance of producers producing food that's consumed by consumers, but we didn't talk about where that energy comes from. What's the major energy source on our planet? It's going to be the sun. And this model also doesn't show that we're losing energy to heat at each step along the way. And so a better model is an ecological pyramid that looks like this. And so the producers on our planet produce food, make energy use where did that energy originally come from? It came from either the sun or chemicals. And so all plants do photosynthesis, and so they're taking energy from the sun and putting it into the energy of the bonds of the food. Now some chemosynthetic bacteria can do the same thing with chemicals like hydrogen sulfide. They're making that energy usable. Now once they've made that energy usable, they can respire it. And so can all the consumers that sit above or below them on this trophic levels. Now we measure the amount of energy that's converted through productivity in one of two ways, either gross primary productivity or net primary productivity. Gross is the overall amount of energy converted and net is just how much the plant gets after it used some of the energy for respiration. Now each of the levels within this food chain is going to be a trophic level and we're losing energy along the way and so a good way to measure this is using an ecological pyramid. We can measure the efficiency, in other words how much energy makes it to the next level. We can measure the energy at each level or we could measure the biomass, how much living material do we have. And so energetics is the study of how energy gets from something like the sun into organisms. What's the most important first step is going to be photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, we take carbon dioxide in the air, water, and the energy in sunlight, and we convert that into oxygen and glucose. If you haven't memorized the equation for photosynthesis, now is the time to do it. You should know what's going into the reaction and what's coming out of the reaction. And why that's important is we can simply turn the arrow around, and now we have the equation for cellular respiration. So that's what you're doing. You're taking in the oxygen that's produced by plants, taking in the sugar, and you're converting that into carbon dioxide and water. The nice thing is that this can be recycled again back into plants. And so this is really how we take energy put it in plants, store it in the food, and so we can utilize it as well. Now one major misconception is that plants are doing respiration as well. They're making the sugar for themselves to release that energy. Now something very similar to photosynthesis is called chemosynthesis. And so if we look down deep in the oceans at these uh, hydrothermal vents, we're producing not only heat, but we're producing a chemical hydrogen sulfide. Also methane can be used this way. And so certain chemosynthetic bacteria, look how similar this is to photosynthesis, can use the energy in the bonds of the hydrogen sulfide to make glucose. They release water and then sulfur. And so the equation looks very similar to photosynthesis. Now what happens is things living around the chemosynthetic bacteria can take in that glucose and they can use oxygen to do cellular respiration. And so we have a totally different system. It's built on the energy inside the chemicals. So no matter where the energy comes from, we can measure the amount that gets into the producers using productivity. Now the bad news is that hardly any of that energy actually gets into the plant. 99% is going to move through it, bounce off of it, the plant doesn't get it. Only 1% actually goes into the producer and we call that the gross primary productivity. It's the amount of energy that the plant actually gets. Now what's the plant going to do? It has to survive. And so it's doing respiration. That's where most of the energy goes. And a small percent of it goes to what's called the net primary productivity. That's the amount that the plant gets if we subtract the amount that it used for respiration. So the bad news, not much energy goes into the producers. What's the good news? There's so much energy contained within the sun. If we look at the productivity on our planet, we could compare different terrestrial and aquatic biomes all the way from the tropical rainforest which has high productivity we're measuring that as the amount of material per meter squared per year all the way down to something like a desert it's not very productive at all what's interesting is cultivated land actually doesn't produce that much we could compare that to aquatic systems like coral reefs are incredibly productive. We could even look at how it changes over time. So this is net primary productivity. So this is terrestrial on land. And watch what happens as it changes over an 11 year period of time. You can see it's just moving back and forth. It's moving from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. You can see there's no production in areas where we have massive deserts. But what's causing that change is simply going to be the seasons. During the summer, we're going to have way more production where there's way more sunlight. 
And so an accurate model of measuring how energy is used is an ecological pyramid like this. And so what we're really looking at here is the net primary productivity, the amount at this level. And so if we start here with the producers, let's say that that small percent is actually 100%. What percent goes to the next level? Well, we're losing energy at each level. And that's because the organism has to survive. It does respiration. And so we're losing heat at each level. And so in general, of that 100% that it, the producers get, only 10% goes to the next level. What percent of this goes to the next level? 10% of that. So now we're down to 1%. And what about the next level? 10% of that. And so we're losing a huge amount of energy at each step along the way. And that's going to be why we have way less tertiary consumers than we're going to have producers in an area. Good way to study this is using an energy pyramid. And let's look at an actual energy pyramid from Silver Springs, Florida. What we're looking at here is, is the amount of energy. They're measuring it in kilocals per meter squared per year. And so it's 20,000 kilocals. Now, where's the energy found? Just looking at this picture, it's going to be, for the most part, in these trees. What amount makes it to the next level to the consumers? Well, when they studied it, it was this amount. So what's the ecological efficiency? What amount made it to the next level? Well, you could just take this and divide it by that. And we could find that 16% moved to the next level. We could look at the, the secondary consumers. You can see it's around 10% there. And we could look at the tertiary consumers. And you can see that it's around 5%. And so ecological efficiency is going to be somewhere between 5 and 20%, depending on how efficient that ecosystem is. Now, what are we really missing on this energy diagram are the decomposers. They're going to make use of a lot of that energy as well. Another way to measure it is biomass, just how much material is made. What's different here is that we don't measure it or over a given period of time. We measure what's called standing crop. It's the amount that's there at one point in time. But you can see the same thing occurs. If we're looking at a Wisconsin lake or a field or a coral reef, the amount of biomass that we have at the producer level is going to be way more than we have at the levels above it. And so did you learn the following? Can you fill in all the blanks? Pause the video. If not, I would say that energy comes from chemicals through chemosynthesis to producers. We could measure productivity as gross or net primary productivity. How do we utilize that energy? This would be respiration all the way down to heat. We then have the trophic levels. Those are going to be the feeding levels. Ecological pyramids measure efficiency. And we can also measure the biomass. And I hope that was helpful.